So now back to the Gudo project for our last tutorial, which was how to do the camera RTS. So let's first start organizing some stuff here. I'm going to create some folders here to organize our structure. So first one is going to be script folder. Then we're going to need a folder for the scenes. So let's call scene. Then I also going to need a folder for any 3D models we export from Blender. So this is going to be called GTF. You can call anything you want. So let's go ahead and create another folder. We're going to call it image. And whenever we use sounds, we are going to create a new folder, which is going to be called sound. Okay, now let's manage this. Our RTS camera script is going to be placed on the folder. Our test unit and building from Blender is going to be put on the GLTF and is going to re-import all of them. Now the word.tsn is a scene, so let's place it here. And let me rename this to be called word test scene. Alright. And also now let's go to the project. If you remember from our previous tutorial, I run the the project in full screen mode so it produces those black boxes because OBS doesn't like it. It takes some seconds to update. So I'm going to instead run it on window mode. So if I just run the project by pressing F6, now you can see that there's no black boxes. OBS is running it. What else we are going to do is enable always run on top. So make sure your event settings are turned on and let's put on the filter always so it filters always on top. So this allows up us to run the main window on top of the editor. This is great for us for testing. So we can see if we press F6 and we click outside, we do not minimize the testing window, which is something we want. So we're going to start with our player interface. From the player interface, we're going to check some inputs of the player. When the player starts to click, we're going to start to update a rectangle too. Then when the player releases the mouse, we are going to first get units from a group of visible units on the screen. And this area 3D is going to create an array of nodes inside it, creating a list of visible objects in the camera. So for each unit visible to the camera, we are going to unproject its vector 3 positions. Then we are going to get a vector 2 of that unit position from the 3D camera to 2D, which is going to check if it is inside the rectangle 2D from the player interface. Then we are going to select the unit finally. So all of this is just for us to make a selection system for our units. Now let's start by building the interface. So let's create a new node, which is going to be a node 2D. And this is going to hold the player interface for our RTS project. So let's call this player interface and let's drag it here on top and for us to test this let's create a button here and I'm going to put some text here it's going to be called player test interface and let's drag here let me place it right here so now if you run, we run our scene, our 2D scene, which is this guy, is going to be run on top of our 3D scene. So if you press F6, you can see that the button stays right here on top of our scene, which is something we want. Let me just place the button a little where I actually want it to be. So we are not moving the player interface, I don't think ever. So let's use this lock pad here so it stays put in place. If you try to move it, and now it doesn't obey you. So let me place the interface where I think I am going to use it like so. This is where for the future is just a, a test prototype thingy. So let's see. Okay. First thing I'm going to do is disable the camera automatic panning we are using because now we are going to use the camera for 
other things. So let's go here to the script of the camera. And because we did this, we can now simply go here and type here false. This should disable the camera to automatically be panned around the corners. So let's see if this works. And as you can see, it no longer moves the camera. Now, right. Now let's save the scene. Let's attach now a script to our player interface. Let's place it under the script folder so everything stays organized. Okay. Let me just clean the code here. And let's give some nodes for us to start with. And so, if you remember our sketch, we are going to also need a area 3D. So let's take the camera here and I'm going to reset this transform position back to the center. Because, let me just place it here. We are going to add a area 3D which is used for detection. So we're going to detect any physical bodies that gets in contact with it. So we know what is, a, what is inside of the camera, what is visible to the camera. This is going to be used for a algorithm we are going to make for the selection of the units. Because if not, we could use some grouping methods, but we would have to run the algorithm for all units in the game. And this is somewhat an optimization because we are going only to use the algorithm of selection in the units visible to the camera. And here is how it's going to work. Let's create a collision shape for that area 3D. So collision shape. And let's add inside the area 3D. And our collision shape now needs a shape object. So let's give it a box shape. And I'm going to change its position of the area, not the shape. So let's go to the transform here. So it stays above ground. Now let's do a test here. Let's run our scene. And I want to see that collision shape. So you see that this blue box disappeared. So let's go to the bug here and show us the collision shapes. So with this option enable, we can see collision shapes and recast nodes for 2D or 3D. So if we run the project, now because the bug is enabled, we can see the blue box of our collision shape of the area 3D. Okay, now let's rename this to visible units area 3D. Now we're going to click on the collision shape and let's run our project. So while the project is running, what I want is when the camera zoom out, and we're going to increase the shape here to be something that encompasses everything that we can see here. So something like this. Now I'm going to, while the project is still running, grab the area 3D and we're going to move it slightly forward. So to move forward in Godot, it's minus Z that way. So let's go here, minus four, I think minus three. So any units that are inside of this blue box are going to be listed on the visible units to the camera. So let's go here. And now we are going to set up some nodes. And let's go ahead and start with our own red variable. And I'm going to call this the player camera. We also are going to need a the area 3D, so we're going to call this player camera visible unit area 3D. Then we also are going to need a nine patch rectangle control, which is going to make our drag box visible to the screen. So let's place here something like UI select rectangle. Okay, let's not define anything else. Let us now do the selection box for our 2D screen. So we are going to go here to the play interface and add a nine patch rectangle. I chose this because it's fairly easy to change the graphics. So we're going to make this to be part of our selection drag box. So let's place right here. Let's save our scene. 
Now I'm going to open GIMP and make just quickly a rectangle for us to use our, as our selection drag box. So now we are back inside GIMP. I'm going to create a new image here. Let's create a new image and let's go 12 by 12 pixels. Then on this small image, let's select everything, Ctrl A. Let's delete the background. And because it doesn't have an alpha, it's not going to do me. Okay, now it works. Now let me shrink the selection by one pixel. Let's paint everything white. Let's deselect again, shrink the selection. And let's paint everything black. Now we can shrink the selection another time and delete the rest. So this is going to be used by the night patch to create something like this. And we are going to use this to create our drag box. So now that you have this, you're going to export this image to our Godot project file. So go ahead and export the image. So now if we go back to Godot, now you should be able to see our image loaded in our project. So let's click on the nine patch rectangle and let's add that texture. So as you can see, it applied some kind of pixel filter effect and it doesn't bother me because what we are going to do now is let's simulate this is going to be our drag box. Now let's go to the patch margin and use the ability of the nine patch rectangle. What is to do the following? Let's type here a number. I think four works okay. And what just happened is it sliced the texture into four parts and it, it extended that image along the size of it, this control. And you can see this behavior on axis stretch. And you can use the stretch functionality, we can use the tile as well. And I think stretch works okay, so let's leave it the default. Now with this, we can test to see how it's going to look like our selection. So let's run the scene. And because that is running above, this is what is going to look like our selection.